Hey loves, welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time coming across my channel. So I know with 2024 approaching, a lot of us are revisiting our weight loss goals. So I will be doing a series this month where I'll feature some of my favorite low carb meal ideas and recipes. I really hope that these videos help you out on your journey in 2024. And if they do, don't forget to save, share and comment below. Now let's go ahead and get into it. So for our first meal, I'm going to make this delicious low carb BLT wrap. When I say it is delicious, it is delicious. Oh my gosh, I eat it pretty much every single day. <laughs> and this depending on what low carb products you use, I would say it's anywhere between like eight to 11 net carbs. The way I have it set up here with the bacon and the low carb wrap that I'm using, I believe it is 11 net carbs for this meal. And we'll check everything out in um, my fitness pal. But I do like these carb counter tortillas. They are a little bit thinner than the carb balance ones. Carb balance ones can sometimes be thick, which can be a good thing. Um, but I find just with wrapping items, it's a little easier for me to wrap with a thinner one. And these tend to be a little bit bigger than the carb balance ones as well. And it's less calories. I believe that the carb balance ones are about 60 or 70 calories and this is 45 calories for one tortilla and then it's four net carbs per tortilla and then we have some sliced tomato I normally use three slices and then we have some romaine lettuce I already have it cut up because I just eat this so often that I don't want to you know have to cut off the leaf of the romaine lettuce and all that stuff because i normally get the big leaves and cut it so anyway and then we have some mayo here and then we also have some thick sliced bacon that i got from walmart so yes you guys this is everything that you'll need so let's go ahead and assemble this together Hey guys, so here is our finished low carb BLT wrap. When I say it's delicious, y'all, y'all have to try this. It is so, so good. Don't skip out on the pepper and the salt. Do everything as instructed, okay? Super, super good. Again, this meal is um, 11 net carbs. So this is what it's looking like. Good. and I put a lot of like lettuce and stuff to beef it up and just make it a little more filling and then I added one serving of some sweet barbecue pork rinds It's 80 calories for the serving and then it is zero carbs so 11 net carbs for this meal and about I want to say maybe 500 and something calories the rest of that bacon I know you guys are thinking like I know you ain't putting all that bacon in there <laughs> the rest of it was for bay so he had his own sandwich and then I had the wrap so yes you guys this will be my first meal and I have this with my detox water I'll try to drink this throughout the day and yeah this is what I'll be having
okay you guys so here is my finished dinner I have here two cheeseburgers with onion and tomato and a slice of bacon on each and then I have it under a bed of lettuce so instead of having it lettuce wrapped I'm just kind of having it you know just with some lettuce <laughs> and yeah I have my pickles on the side and yes you guys I might drizzle this with a tiny bit of ranch I'm not sure yet but I have my mayo and stuff on there so it should be juicy enough okay it is looking quite delicious I cannot wait to eat this and yes you guys this is what I will be having for dinner Hey guys, happy Tuesday. <laughs> so I thought about these chorizo chaffles that I made before that I absolutely love. It's kind of hard for me to eat a whole bunch of eggs. So this is one of my favorite ways to have eggs in a chaffle. And a chorizo chaffle was the first one that I tried and I really, really like it because you already know chorizo is pork and then it's salted, it's full of flavor, it's really good. And then I went ahead and topped it with some cotija cheese. So if you're not a huge egg person either, I mean, you will see me eating eggs throughout this, but it's not my absolute favorite. So I have to have it certain ways that I like it. So yeah, if you're not huge on eggs either, then this might be um, a great way for you to have them. So yes, you guys, this is my first meal. Okay, you guys, so we are about to make us a chicken and crust pizza. Okay, you guys, so Babe is probably gonna eat out tonight. Trent is making him some chicken strips right now, but I'm thinking he probably still will eat some fast food when Babe gets here. So I feel like I want to have something that feels like I'm eating out somewhere. <laughs> so I'm gonna make me a chicken crust pizza. Now I've never had anything like this before. I've heard of it and I was like, mm, I don't know about no chicken crust as a pizza. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about no chicken as a crust for a pizza. So, you know, since we here with the carnivore, I'm like, why not try it now? So what you're gonna need to make the crust is a can of chicken breast. I saw several recipes, some use a smaller one. I'm just gonna use the bigger one for a bigger pizza and hopefully the measurements work out. But you're gonna need a can of chicken breast or you can use ground chicken if you don't wanna use canned meat. And then you're gonna need a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. And y'all, I hope that I have this in the frame because y'all know I'm working with another camera and it doesn't have I can't view while I'm filming, which sucks majorly. So I'm gonna have to buy another camera or something because I don't like this. I need to be able to see what's going on. <laughs> so yes, this is um, some grated Parmesan cheese and then your seasoning. So I'm just gonna use some Italian seasonings and some salt. Oh, and then garlic powder. So I'll probably have that in a bit. So let's go ahead and mix everything up. And then we're gonna just put it on a parchment paper, lay it in a pizza shape, and we're gonna bake it for 20 minutes on 425. Hey you guys, so this is what everything looks like before we put it in the oven. Again, we're gonna go ahead and put it in the oven for 20 minutes at 425. Try to get it as even as possible. Okay, you 
Okay, you guys, so here is our chicken crust. And y'all, it actually looks like a pizza crust. I'm like very shocked. It really does look like it, but tasting and looking is two different things, okay? I have learned that with keto. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and dress this up. I'm gonna use just regular pepperoni. I have um, Rayo's marinara sauce, some mozzarella cheese, and then I cut up some little smokies I'm gonna put on there as well. Probably not all of this, but I just cut up a few of them. So let's go ahead and dress it up. Okay guys, so here is our chicken crust pizza fresh up out the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and let it cool for a couple of minutes, cut it up and give you guys a taste test. But I must admit, it does look extra delicious. I mean, the look is there. So let's just, we'll see. <laughs> okay you guys, so now it is time for our taste test. So I'm gonna get this smaller piece here and take this little print part off. But this is what it's looking like, quite impressive. Let's see what it's tasting like. Y'all, not bad, not bad. I'm gonna take one more bite. So it definitely tastes like a pizza, but I would say it's like, like you're eating almost like pizza topping because it still feels like meat <laughs> to me. Like I said, you can kind of trick yourself with the look, but it just tastes like a, like you scraped off some good pizza toppings <laughs> to me, but it's a little more easier to eat. And I do feel like when it gets to the crust part here on the end, it gives you a little bit more of a bite, like a normal slice of pizza. But is it good? It is very, very good. I like it a lot. It tricks your mind into thinking you're eating pizza. <laughs> Okay guys, so the next recipe that I'm gonna show you is this delicious, delicious Cajun fish fry recipe that I got from Papa G on YouTube. I'll be sure to link him down below. Everything that I've tried from him has been really, really good. Um, now I did do this recipe once before the way that it was on the original video and it was a complete fail. If I have a picture, I'll insert it so you can see how it looked. But all of the breading ended up falling off when I tried to fry it. So I don't know if I had too much oil. I don't know if the oil was not hot enough. I don't know, but I still ate it even though all of the breading came off and it was still delicious. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to try this again. So I tried it again, but I just did it with an air fryer instead. I also think that you can bake this and it will taste just as good. Or you can just try to fry it. Just make sure that your oil is really, really hot and maybe that you don't have too much oil. Maybe, I don't know if I didn't do it right and that's why it just didn't stick. But I've been doing it since then. I've made this recipe probably like five or six times in the air fryer and it is delicious every single time. Like I'm in love. So I'm gonna do the fish recipe and I'm also gonna do um, the tartar sauce recipe that's on his channel because trust me, when I say I eat it all the time, I do. So I have to show you guys this as far as a dinner idea because it is so good. So, and it's quick too. It's 18 minutes in the air fryer. So um, <clears throat> one of the reasons I think it's really good is because of the Cajun um, recipe, the Cajun season that he has. It's like a homemade one. So I made some already and I already have some here. I just put it transferred into an old onion powder um, thing so I can just sprinkle it a little easier. But basically the seasoning is um, for four fillets. It's one tablespoon of paprika, two and a half teaspoons of salt, one and a half teaspoon of ground black pepper, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. If you don't like a lot of spice, which I don't, so I just put like a sprinkle of cayenne pepper or I put like maybe a half a teaspoon instead of a full teaspoon. So you can, you know, change it to your liking. 
and then I also then it's also one teaspoon of garlic powder one teaspoon of onion powder a half a teaspoon of dried thyme and a half a teaspoon of dried oregano I've never had dried oregano so I've never put that in but I, I did use all of the other ingredients so first of all I think it's the seasoning get make you some of the seasoning because it's very very delicious and so first you start off by seasoning and I season it liberally I like it all to have like a, that color to it so that's the seasoning now this is the secret of his recipe is yellow mustard and then when I first thought I was like mustard uh -uh, I ain't never had no mustard on no fish <laughs> but he swore that it brings out the flavoring and you're not gonna taste the mustard so I was like okay let me try it listen did I detect a lie was there a lie there was no lie it's bomb okay so what I do is just kind of shake it up and just add some mustard on there liberally and I've heard of mustard on chicken but I had never heard of it on um, fish before so we're gonna do this to both sides and we're gonna rub in that mustard um, but before we do that the next step of this is having some um, pork rinds panko or basically some smashed up pork rinds to mimic breadcrumbs in the keto community we are already know about this and we're gonna put some of that and then we're gonna also season the pork rinds I'm putting some of the seasoning here let me go out a little bit because I'm a little zoomed in I zoomed out a little bit so I'm gonna also put some of the seasoning inside of the pork rinds as well give it a good toss the next thing I like to do is just have my air fryer canister and this is it just have it ready and sitting to the side so as soon as I season this and braid it I just put it straight into the air fryer and I'll show you an overhead view of how that looks so I'm gonna stop talking I'm just gonna show you what I do so we're gonna season both sides we're gonna put the mustard we're gonna put it in the panko and one last step is that I do put some oil inside of a spray bottle and then I spray the bottom of my air fryer and then I spray the top of the fish so you don't have to flip this over at first I was flipping it over and then one time I decided not to and you don't even have to I don't know because of the air is flowing and circulating all around it you don't have to do that so basically I spray it with oil you can spray it with an oil spray or actual oil and this has worked for me so I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking and you'll see me go ahead and bread this up
Okay, so here is what the fish look like. And now I'm going to take my oil and just spray it all over the fish. My camera's a little light, but you can do oil spray. doesn't have to be you can do just like olive oil spray or something like that I just wanted the real taste of like oil so it can feel like it's fried okay so it's just coming out like mm, it's about to be so bad okay so this is what it looks like up close now I'm going to go ahead and put this in my air fryer for 18 minutes. That has been the time that's kind of worked for me. Okay, it's about to start. Okay guys, and while the fish is cooking, I'm just going to show you how to make Papa G's um, tartar sauce that I make to go with this, which is delicious as well. And it's only three ingredients, super, super easy. So all you're gonna need is a one third of a cup of mayo. And this makes more than enough. Then you're gonna need one fourth of a cup of dill relish, not the sweet relish. Um, the dill relish only has one carb for one tablespoon, okay? So we're gonna use a fourth of a cup. And I like the one in the jar better, um, but when I went to go buy some more, I was not able to find the one in the jar of the classic. And sometimes I'll add even a little more relish because I love it. So that's our relish. Get that. And I only have a tiny bit left inside of here. So I'm going to just go ahead and put that in as well. So you can really just play with it and find out what ratio you like. But you know it's pickled so it's salty which I like. I love salt. And then now you're just going to add a sprinkle of garlic powder and um, I think he says an eighth of a teaspoon or something if I'm not mistaken but I just sprinkle it in there and then you just give it a good mix And I'm telling you guys, when they, you eat it with that fish, oh my gosh, it's so good. It's so, so, so good. And before I was making my tartar sauce with sweet relish, which is good too, but I don't know. It seemed, I seem to like this one better. So this is what you get. Then I put it in the refrigerator, let it thicken up a little bit. But it's perfect just like this as well so this is what i'll have on the side of my two pieces of fish okay guys well this is what our fish is looking like so far bomb and golden brown i think we still have about seven minutes left so oh, you can see Keep cooking. Okay, you guys, so my battery died, so I am doing all this on my cell phone and trying to do one hand, get the food on the plate, and the other hand, hold the cell phone. So please bear with me. But this is how our fish came out looking crispy and delicious, golden brown. And let's go ahead. Wait. This was 
Oh no, my other piece broke. Get it together. Other piece. Oh, oh wow. It's looking quite delicious right now. Oh my goodness. When I tell y'all, when I tell you this is bum bum bum. Now remember we have our tartar sauce that has been in the refrigerator waiting to be plated. So I'm gonna go put some of that on here. See how nice and thick it got since it's been in the fridge. we trust me you guys this dish is delicious so i hope that you enjoyed this dinner recipe now we'll get on to our next one try this one try this this is fire this is delicious this is good bomb 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 <laughs> Hey guys, so today is Tuesday. The time now is probably like 3.30, 3.45, and I'm just now having my first meal. So what we have here is some chicken apple sausage links. And I saw these at Costco and I was like, you know what? I need to pick these up. They sound super delicious. I have some coleslaw in the refrigerator that's about to go bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that, make me a nice creamy coleslaw salad and then i have my sugar-free barbecue sauce and my low carb bread so yes you guys this is my first meal i'm about to taste test this for you guys so let's go ahead and taste this this is what it's looking like it's gonna be messy girl mm, mm, mm. my goodness this is so delicious so delicious oh my gosh these chicken sausage links are delicious and with the crunch of the coleslaw, girl, the barbecue sauce coming through, this right here is delicious. This is a meal. So yes, you guys, definitely try this out. If you have a Costco membership, definitely try this out. Bomb. Okay, you guys. So the time now is 7.17 and I am hungry, so I'm about to get started on dinner. Now, I picked up this fajita chicken kit from Costco when I got the those sausages. Oh my God, I tried those sausages, okay? I just wanted to find something that was quick and easy to make because I've been really busy lately, so hopefully this does taste good. It's already fully cooked. You're just basically like heating and serving. If anything, I'll just be adding like some salt and pepper or something of that sort. Now, I do have limited cooking space because me and Bay were cooking both at the same time. He has his own meal. I have my own meal for right now because, you know, I'm trying to keep it low carb and he's trying to keep it Jamaican, okay? Oh, this is Babe's dinner. Hey guys, so here are my finished tacos 
and oh my gosh y'all at first when i was doing the chicken i was like oh my gosh this is looking quite iffy it didn't look like it tastes good and i'm so glad that i tasted it first because i was about to go in with the salt the pepper the garlic powder everything else and to my surprise it was perfectly seasoned and for me to say something is perfectly seasoned is like no i can always add something it had a nice little kick to it it had a little bit of spice it had just the right amount of salt and everything else so yeah you guys let's go ahead and give this a taste test as a whole okay this is what it's looking like mm, mm, mm. delicious a 10 out of 10 especially for this to be like literally a 10 minute meal and I paid $15 for it and it is so much left over I'm probably gonna use it for tomorrow as well because look how much i got i still have pretty much like a whole pan left so yes you guys this would be great for like you know a family dinner or something really quick and all you have to do is make your shells and you're done so yes you guys this is what i'll be having for dinner Hey guys, so here is my finished dinner, my second meal. So I tried a new recipe out, some creamy garlic Brussels sprouts. And y'all, once I saw the video, I knew I wanted to make it immediately, okay? So I had a whole bunch of music playing earlier, so that's why I just kind of showed you first how I made it, but I will link the recipe that I followed down below in the description box. But yes, you guys, this is my jerk chicken. I have a thigh and a wing, and then here is our creamy Brussels sprouts. They did get a little bit cold, but I'm just gonna still do a quick taste test before I microwave and all that, just to show you guys, but or just to let you guys know how it tastes. But babe had already went inside of my dang home pot. I'm like, I'm supposed to film that part. You already didn't ate some. He's like, yeah, I like it. <laughs> Mm. Oh, that is so good. You know, that is so good. Oh my goodness. Mm, mm, mm. That right there is very delicious. Such a good side to go along with any meat. <laughs> that feels like really fulfilling and just the perfect amount of creaminess. I'm not used to using mozzarella to top things with normally. And sometimes I find that it can get rubbery. Normally I would do like a Mexican blend type of cheese, which I would probably do the next time. But trust, I will be making this recipe over and over and over again because the taste is absolutely amazing. And I already know, babes, there's chicken is bomb. So yes, you guys, that is what I'll be having for dinner. Don't deny that I could use some company. Okay, 
Hey guys, so here is our finished breakfast. We have some pumpkin almond flour pancakes, bacon, and a half of grapefruit. So when I started making the pancakes, I was like, you know what? I have a little bit of pumpkin puree. So I decided just to add like maybe one, I think one or two tablespoons you guys saw in there just for a slight hint of pumpkin flavor. So hopefully it did come through in the pancakes. I got three slices of bacon I put in the air fryer. And y'all, ever since I did that three-day military diet, I've really been liking um, grapefruit like I'll just eat it by itself or sometimes I'll sprinkle a little bit of the um, sugar-free substitute on top and it's just so refreshing and it tastes so good I love it I love citrus type of things so let's go ahead and taste these pancakes and see if that pumpkin flavor came through and I just topped everything with a little bit of sugar-free syrup I don't know if I said that already it was definitely good. I don't know if I'm tasting pumpkin though. I might not have put enough. Maybe if you're like really searching for it, you might be able to taste a little hint, but I don't think I put enough for it to be like, if I serve this to someone else, I don't think they would taste the pumpkin in it. <laughs> so I'll probably try to do this again, but just add a little bit more. Maybe because I saw the color change, I thought that it wouldn't was enough. But for that flavor to come through, I think you definitely need a little bit more than a tablespoon. But nonetheless, super, super good. I love Simple Meals brand. They make pretty good stuff. <laughs> so um, I haven't tried anything that I really didn't like. So yeah, the almond flour pancakes are bomb. And y'all already know how I feel about my bacon. So yes, you guys, this is what I'll be having for breakfast. y'all so this is what i will be having for my dessert this is the birch benders keto friendly birthday cake and it's four net carbs for this cup and then i just went ahead and added some whipped topping on top now i've had like the brownie cake or chocolate cake one and i really like that one but i've never tried the birthday cake so let's go ahead and taste it and it's it recommends to microwave it for 60 seconds but i do it for about 45 just so that it doesn't like dry it all the way out mm -hmm. one more bite i like it you guys it's like light and it's not as i don't know if i want to say dense as chocolate but it just has a light fun taste to it because it's birthday cake i actually really like it so instead of always getting the chocolate one i'll probably mix it up sometimes and get this one as well so yes you guys this is my dessert and how i'll be ending what i eat in a day okay you guys so today we're going to be making a super simple cheesy creamy delicious chicken recipe that i found on pinterest this is called keto garlic parmesan chicken and when i say i've made this like maybe i don't know three times at this point I've made it three times because it tastes really, really good and it is super fast and simple. So all you're going to need is your seasonings, um, which you would normally season your chicken with. This is the only thing that I did differently because I don't think that the recipe called for you seasoning your chicken beforehand. I think all the seasonings is in the cream mixture, but you know, we gonna season this chicken up. So don't quote me on that one, but so basically I'm going to be using salt, pepper, garlic powder, and ground paprika this is my first time using paprika in this but i do enjoy the taste in every other recipe so i'm going to go ahead and try it with this one the last time i did it with oregano and it was delicious that way as well and then you're going to need some mozzarella cheese um, the recipe calls for fresh parmesan cheese but i've never used it with fresh because this is always what i have on hand so i just used it with this parmesan cheese and it worked perfectly fine you're also going to need some sour cream and some garlic um, I'm going to be using minced garlic. Last time I used fresh cloves. That's what the recipe calls for. Um, but just to make everything just more easy, I'm just going to go ahead and use this minced garlic. Um, then you're also going to need 
two chicken breasts and you're gonna go ahead and cut these in half the long way to make them thinner so it's gonna make you four basically chicken breasts so yeah that's all you need two chicken breasts and your seasonings and mozzarella cheese parmesan cheese sour cream and garlic oh yeah and I also forgot cream cheese that's a big part of this recipe now this recipe does cost for six no for eight ounces of cream cheese but on a lot of the reviews I heard that the cream cheese was a little overpowering the taste of the cream cheese is a little overpowering so I decided to from the beginning I've only used six ounces of cream cheese and that's been more than enough and it doesn't taste overbearing it tastes really really good so I mean that's just a recommendation you can go with eight ounces I'll post the original recipe down below um, but I decided to go ahead and go with six ounces okay so let's go ahead and get started okay you guys so I've already um, cut my chicken breast in half so that's made four made it much thinner and now I'm just gonna go ahead and season it up okay this is what our chicken looks like once it's all seasoned up okay so now I'm gonna just go ahead and lay this in the bottom of a baking dish it doesn't say to oil it but I just lightly oil it at the bottom um, and I'm gonna just lay them flat inside of a baking dish and then we're gonna go ahead and work on our cheese mixture okay so here is our block of cream cheese a whole block is eight ounces so I'm just gonna cut it right at six ounces so one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm gonna put that entire block in the microwave for about, mm, I'm gonna try 30 seconds and just see if that um, softens it up enough. I got my assistant here helping me. <laughs> Seems pretty, seems soft enough. <laughs> Go for you want to say hi to the camera? No. Bless yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we're, so now we're gonna go ahead and add a half a cup of sour cream. So just mix it up a little bit. Half a cup. So the recipe calls for four cloves of garlic. Again, I'm going to be just using this minced garlic. Um, I don't know how much garlic to put in here, but I'm just going to take a nice little table. Might be extra garlicky, I don't know, but I like garlic, so I'm not tripping too much. Okay, so we're also going to need a full cup of Parmesan cheese, but right now we're just going to add a half a cup. So we have a half a cup of Parmesan cheese here. We're going to go ahead and put that in. And now we just need to season our mixture. I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit more salt. We have enough garlic, so I'm just going to add some pepper. And now we're just gonna go ahead and give all of this a good mix, spread it on top of the chicken, and then we're gonna top it with some mozzarella cheese. It should look really creamy like this. Okay, you guys, so now we're gonna take this mixture. I think I was just trying to show it to you guys, but this is what it's looking like and we're going to spread it all over the chicken and then we're going to top everything with mozzarella cheese mozzarella cheese i'm not really um the mozzarella cheese i'm not really like measuring or anything i'm just going to sprinkle it on top so i'm just making sure got a good dollop on each one first 
Oops. I'm gonna start spreading it. to make sure all of the chicken is covered up and see the six ounces of cream cheese is more than enough to cover the chicken so now we're gonna go ahead and add our parmesan cheese on top When I tell you guys, you know how breasts can be dry. When I tell you this is so juicy, not dry at all. Microwaves well. I really love this recipe. So for me, I just put a liberal amount of cheese so it's covered. And then now you're gonna take your Parmesan cheese, your other half cup. And remember, you can also use um, fresh parmesan. That's what the recipe called for. Just making sure the lumps is out. And now I'm going to just sprinkle that all over the top as well. Okay, you guys, and that's it. This is what it's looking like right before it goes into the oven. Then we're going to place it in the oven for 25 to 35 minutes. I'm just going to go ahead and set my timer for 30 minutes. And then when this comes out the oven, we're going to go ahead and just garnish it with a little bit of parsley. Okay, you guys, so I'm making some broccoli to go on the side of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some butter, season it up, and that's pretty much it. I got about two more minutes left. Oop, I got about two more minutes left for the chicken, and I'm going to check and see how it is. Because it said 25 to 35 minutes, so I'll put it at 30. I think that should be fine. Okay, you guys, so this is what it's looking like fresh out of the oven. I'm just going to go ahead and let this sit and let the sauce thicken up a bit. While it's sitting, I'm going to go ahead and garnish it with a little bit of dried parsley flakes that I have. Delicious. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cool down just a little bit and then we're going to go ahead and plate this up. And this is my broccoli. I just kind of smash it up a little bit. I didn't actually make broccoli mash um, like I do sometimes. This kind of chopped it down a little bit and I add some crispy onions. I know it's kind of cheating but I love crispy onions inside of my vegetables. Very, very good. Okay, you guys, so it's about time to go ahead and plate this up. I think I'm going to take this middle one. Now, this is quite saucy, so. Just want to probably take the plate over here, because. Take some of this cheese and I'll put it on top. I don't know if you guys can see what it's looking like. And you know, all this extra little cheese sauce on top is where it's at.
And then I like to get some of that like burnt cheese that's on the side, not burnt, but browned, and put it on top as well. And I'm gonna get my broccoli. and that's it let me go ahead and give you guys an overhead view okay you guys and this is our finished dinner moist chicken super cheesy deliciousness i'm telling you guys you're gonna love 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 this chicken if you do decide to try this recipe don't forget to tag me at keto for show let me know how you guys ended up liking it tag me in your stories all of that <laughs>
ideally this is supposed to be the concept you sit and let your cheese cool over a bowl upside down and that makes the shape of your bowl but i noticed right off the back when i took this out it looked like it was not totally melted on the inside i almost could still see the like grains of cheese in it so i'm not sure what's going on here i probably should have just used regular cheese like i've always done i don't know when i flip this over if it will harden because i can kind of see little cracks in it it doesn't feel like it's all the way melted together here on the bottom so i'm gonna let this sit for a full five minutes <laughs> just to hopefully it won't fall apart on me i'm hoping it won't <laughs> but yes try it with regular like just shredded cheese and see how it works for you it'll probably be much better but we shall see okay you guys i am so sad inside because she is looking quite flimsy okay i don't know she's not giving what's supposed <laughs> She's not giving what's supposed to have been given. You understand? And I only have... <laughs> I only have like a tiny bit of this like nacho cheese left. My only other option is to maybe try it out with mozzarella and see if that will work. But she's giving... Look, she falling right now. She falling. She has fallen. Lord, the taco should have went down. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was a fail. Okay, so, y'all, I feel like, no, I can't. I'm, I have to at least try with the mozzarella. It's only another seven, eight minutes. I ain't ate all this time. I might as well just try one more again, one more time. And yeah, we're going to do this with the mozzarella very quickly. And we're going to... Again, hope for the best. That that would have been a good size taco bowl too if it would have worked. But, oh, why is this happening to me? Okay, well maybe if I do a little something like that. Come on, mozzarella, don't fail me now. And y'all, I did way longer than um the seven minutes. I just kept putting it. When I seen it wasn't doing what it was supposed to do, I just kept putting two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. I mean, I probably put a whole nother six or seven minutes on it, and it still was not acting right. Okay, guys, so we're going to go with this one. And we're going to see. This is what she's looking like. I'm going to put her back in the oven about seven minutes. Okay, you guys, so this one is fresh out of the oven and it is looking more promising. Okay, I can't promise anything, but it looks promising. Okay, now I'm scared to touch it. Let me let it rest for like one minute and then we're going to flip this thing on the bowl, let it cool, and we'll finally be done with this salad. <laughs> guys so it's been about five minutes and this is the longest I'm awake because I'm hungry and this is gonna be what it is okay so let's see this is what it's looking like and you know what it's not bad Maybe I need a smaller bowl, but it worked. I mean, it looks golden brown. It's crispy on the edges. I could have maybe had it in for a little bit longer, but I was just scared. I didn't know what to do. Okay, so this is what it's looking like. Like we got this side, but this side is just not. You know what? I'm just layering it on top of it. We're going to do it like that. You don't call it a day because I ain't got time. So let's put our lettuce in here.
you guys so here is my finished taco salad bowl and even with our mishaps and everything it came out absolutely beautiful I just can't wait to dig in like it looks so good and I'm going to have it with this medium lava La Victoria thick and chunky salsa and yes you guys this will be my dinner Took a chance on a good thing. Yeah. Now I got you on my right wing. Make love, 